Hey everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today because I have this super cute card to show you. I'm going to start off doing some Copic coloring and I'm going to be using the Fa La 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 Friends stamp set. It has these cute bears and the llama. And the cool thing about this stamp set is these bears are actually in our annual catalog. There's different bears and they have framelits. So by purchasing this, if you've already purchased the bear framelits, you're kind of just extending the use of those dies. And same with the llama. Okay, so let's get started. I want to do some coloring for you, but I'm not going to do all of the coloring. I just thought I would give you a few tips. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink here for the big papa bear and I'm gonna ink him all up and I'm stamping him on um, Crafter Companion Spectrum Noir cardstock. Now, you know I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so 99.9% .9 of the time I use everything that's Stampin' Up! because I like that Stampin' Up! products all coordinate and they just make a lot of sense to me and they make my crafting super easy. But um, I love coloring and in order to get a really awesome colored image, you really have to pair the correct um, card stocks with the correct inks. So these are Copic markers. They're alcohol-based markers. I'm sure you're familiar with them. If you've ever done any card making, you're probably familiar. These are not sold by Stampin' Up! Um, unfortunately, I wish they, I really wish they were, but they're not. And so, um, I've purchased these separately. They are not cheap. They're very expensive markers. So they're not something I would suggest getting into if you don't really love coloring and you don't think that this is something that you would stick with doing. Um, you're talking anywhere from six to nine dollars a marker and I've seen them all the way up to twelve dollars a marker depending on how hard they are to get your hands on. You can buy them in huge packs for like four hundred dollars. Um, some packs can be like $3.50. So, um, yeah, that's my little disclaimer here. The way I color looks really pretty, but it's, it's expensive. It's not cheap. So, um, that's my little disclaimer for Copic markers. So we're going to start out coloring the bear and I'm going to use E31, 35, and 37. And I've received a lot of comments and messages about my Copic coloring and how I learned to do Copic coloring and um, why do I do it and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that while I'm coloring. I always start with my lightest color, uh, almost always, and then I blend in the other colors and I just cover the base of my project with the lightest color. Um, because the way that Copic markers work is they get into the paper and they actually soak into the fibers of the paper and then if you add other colors to them, the colors actually mix and so they're actually like blending underneath. You can't really see it happening on top, but they moisten the paper and then they move around together. So if you lay down a coat of um, your lightest color first. It allows your other colors to blend easier, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, Copic markers. The reason I, so first question I've gotten the most is if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, why do you use Copic markers? So my answer to that is um, because I love coloring and because I believe strongly that um, there's lots of options out there to make us happy. And I don't do this just to sell Stampin' Up! product. I do what I do because I absolutely love creating and crafting. So for me, it's not all about getting an order from you. It is about um, exploring options in my crafting that make me feel happy. When I started with Stampin' Up! I started because um, everything matched. The ribbon and the ink and the stamp pads and the cardstock and everything matched and it took all the guesswork out of it for me and I really needed that because I was brand new to stamping and brand new. Um, I had never stamped before until about six years ago. I had never stamped a day in my life so I had no clue what this industry was all about 
and Stampin' Up was perfect. I, um, I often describe Stampin' Up like a gateway drug. <laughs> it's like a great place to start if you've never stamped and it's a great place to stay with even if you are a seasoned stamper who doesn't want to fuss with a bunch of different stuff. So I have a customer who is one of my best customers and I really adore her and all she purchases is Stampin' Up! products. She never buys anything else because she doesn't want to fuss with trying to match colors and stuff and doing like what I'm doing right now. She doesn't want to fuss with stuff like this. This would be, this would make her annoyed. So there's all different kinds of people out there, right, that like different, um, types of things and some people are not avid lifestyle crafters and some people are and so it's just all about what works for you. I'm using my medium tone now to just blend that darker tone and then I'm going to go with my lighter tone to just blend it to the medium tone. So um, that's kind of the story with the Copics like and why I use them I'm a crafter first and a Stampin' Up demonstrator second I love Stampin' Up and I love what I do but um, my soul is super important to me and how I feed my soul is through my craft and creating and um, I was born to craft <laughs> I was born to create things and I can't deny certain aspects of my creativity for a price tag. That's not who I am as a human being. I can't, I can't say, well, I'm not going to use that because I can't sell it. Now, I am very careful because I don't want to just use anything and become frustrated with... I mean, that's why I started Stampin' Up! in the first place is so that I wouldn't be like totally frustrated all over the place like trying to figure out what to use with what. So Stampin' Up! is the perfect combination for me of crafting and um, simplicity but then I can add stuff into it like Copic markers, watercoloring, Zig Clean real brushes, um, watercolor pencils, colored pencils I can add that kind of stuff in and it complements the stuff that I already have really well and it just allows me to unleash that part of me that has to craft and has to color because there's like I just love it there's a part of me that just has to do that okay I'm using R37 for the sweater which is really a beautiful red it's kind of like um the only way I can describe it to you probably would be like, it's a, like a cranberry red. It's got a little bit of a purplish feel to it. Um, and I just love it. I think it's one of the prettiest red colors. So I'm just going to color his sweater and I'm keeping it very simple. Um, everything I'm doing, I'm keeping really simple. Okay, so I've answered the first question about my Copics. Now I'm using R39 to do some of the blending. Just darken up a few areas here to give a little bit of shading. Um, so that was the first question. If you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, why do you use Copic markers? That I've been asked that, believe it or not. Okay, so now you know the reason for that because I love to color. And then um, the other question I get asked is how did you learn to do Copic coloring? Because um, people who have been following me for a long time know that I'm fairly new to Copic coloring. Um, but I've, I feel like I have a really good concept of how it works um, and how to color well. Um, I'm no Sandy Alnock, but I, I have a pretty good grasp on, on coloring and blending. So I learned by taking lots of classes. I took a class at onlinecardclasses.com and I also took um, Sandy Alnock's Copic Jumpstart class, which I will tell you is the best class for its value that I have ever taken. So I highly recommend taking Sandy Alnock's Copic Jumpstart class. If you are um, trying to learn how to blend and use Copic markers, she is probably one of the best teachers I've ever come across. 
as far as just teaching you principles of how to do certain things. She's really amazing. So that's who I suggest. All right, so we're going to move on and just color one fish really quick because I know this is getting long and I don't want to keep you all day. And we still have to put the card together. So um, I have G94 and G99. And all I did is I just colored the whole fish with G94. And then I went back with G99. And I colored his little lips and his fins. Okay. So when I'm done, it looks like this guy. And then I just colored the little red hats because he has little Santa hats on. Okay, so that's how I did my coloring. And then out of the magic of TV, I have all of these finished pieces. And I've die cut them out and everything. And you can see they're super cute. So to put the card together, I really love how this card turned out. It's probably, probably, I don't know, it ranks way up there in my favorites for the Christmas cards that I've made so far. Okay, so we're gonna grab the Big Shot and um, I'm gonna put one plate down and then I have my crumb cake cardstock and it's cut at four by five and a quarter. I'm gonna use my layering circle framelits and I'm gonna place the largest circle, kind of, I would say, about, you know, half inch from the top. I'm gonna use my post-it note tape and tape this down in place and just run this through. Now, you may notice the last few days I have, my videos have been live while I have recorded them. And that is simply because <laughs> I am behind the eight ball, y'all. I, I'm shooting this video for you late Thursday night and if I would have recorded it and then tried to do the voiceover I probably wouldn't have gotten a video up for you so um yeah they'll it'll go back the way it was eventually here but I'm just trying to catch up and and stay stay up with y'all because I've been getting behind okay so now I've got the cute sentiment here which is hysterical to me because I love a pun. I love a good pun. Being punny is so cute and all of these um, images are have like little puns sentiments. So all I did, you see this is curved, is the cool thing about photopolymer stamps is you can just maneuver them however you want onto a, onto a clear block and push them down. So all I did was lay this kind of at a half circle and pushed it down right on top of there and now it will kind of form around my circle which I really love I think that that is such a cute um like kind of a, a piece of detail or interest for this card that I just really think it needed okay so we have a piece of whisper white cardstock cut at four and a quarter by eleven and then it's folded in half and then I have a piece of this gorgeous paper that has the plaid on the other side, and I am a sucker for plaid. Now this piece is cut at um, three and three quarters by five inches. This is out of our Christmas paper stack, and the name of it is escaping me, but you can always see all of the supplies that I use over on my blog, and the description to, or the link to my blog is always in the description below this video, okay? Or the video. <laughs> all right, so now on the back of here, look at that. That's some, that's some serious adhesive. <laughs> okay, on the back of, of this little cutout that I've created, I am going to lay down some foam tape and this is Stampin' Up's um, new foam strips that they came out with. I love them. They're really intended to make shaker cards but you can use them obviously for whatever you want. Um, but I love them because the strip is so thin. It's very very thin and small and so it just makes for really awesome dimensionalizing that's not a word dimensionalizing is probably not a word I don't know it could be I could be wrong oops I just tore my paper okay let's go ahead and continue to remove the back 
and then I'm just going to pop this up right over the top. Now you're going to notice that the plaid paper does not stick out around the edges. It's only just there in the circle. And this is guard with garden green and then this is stamped in garden green. So it really pulls the green out. And the fun thing about this is it matches my little fishies. And I did that on purpose. Everything's a plan, right? So I'm just gonna add some dimensionals to the back of my bear my big bear and get him stuck down in the center. I just love how this card turned out. I'm super excited about it. Um, and I think it's so funny. It says, this is your Christmas cod, which is a type of fish. I'm sure you're familiar with that. And then of course, I don't have my, oh, here's my glue dots. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so the way I'm doing this is I've got some linen thread here. And I'm just going to take a pretty long piece and I am going to just roll it around here and tie myself a little knot. Maybe do two. and then grab a glue dot onto the back of my fish and it's kind of on his mouth. And I'm gonna stick the glue dot onto the linen thread and then stick the glue dot down onto the bear's hand. So he's got a little fishy there. And then we're gonna make a loop in the linen thread. Let me get my, other fi my next fish ready. So I'm gonna add a couple of glue dots to this guy so that he stays in place. So I'm gonna loop my linen thread like so. And then this guy will just go down right in front. And then I'm gonna loop my linen thread again and get another couple dots here. and put this one down here. All right, and then I'm gonna add a glue dot under this fish's tail, because I really want this fish to stick in place. And then, okay, so then I gotta do one more knot, and then it's up to you how you feel about this. If you don't care that the linen thread is, is popping up there, then leave it. Just leave it like that. It's totally fine. If it does bother you, you can just take a little bit of glue and right where the linen thread intersects, I'll show you, like this little area right here, just take a little dot of glue underneath there and push it down and hold it down and it'll stay down. I personally don't care. I think it adds some fun dimension to the card to have it kind of popping up. But here's what it looks like if it's not popping up. So that's your options. So thanks so much for hanging out with me. I know this was a long video, but I think it was worth it because this is the cutest card. So thanks for hanging out and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.